You would be amazed how many people contact me each week saying they don't get it. They've added shrimp to their aquariums and the shrimp all died. In this video, I will share with you the five most common mistakes new shrimp keepers make and how you can avoid them. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll share with you my one top tip every shrimp keeper should know. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm the author of the new ebook on Neocaridina shrimp. I'm pleased to say we're able to give away copies of this book for free to the first 100 people who click the link in the description. Whenever we're new to something, making mistakes is inevitable. However, when it comes to shrimp keeping, those mistakes can lead to the death of all your shrimp. So, in reverse order, from 5 down to 1, here are the mistakes that are most commonly made by new shrimp keepers and how you can avoid them. At number 5, it's buying from a bad source. One of the joys of keeping shrimp is the fact they reproduce so quickly and readily. You only need to add a dozen shrimp to a properly set up aquarium and within a few months you will have hundreds and hundreds of shrimp. Whilst this is a plus, and one of the main reasons so many students have chosen to join my course, How to Make $500 a Month Breeding Red Cherry Shrimp, it's also a negative. Because shrimp are typically easy to breed, you do end up with bad breeders. A bad breeder is someone who makes no effort to keep their colony healthy, no effort to keep their colony free from disease, and no effort to feed their shrimp a good quality diet that will ensure those shrimp are strong and healthy. I would always recommend finding a reliable source for your shrimp. If your local fish store sells shrimp, take some time to see how quickly they turn their stock over. Are the shrimp selling well, or are they simply dying in the sales tank? A good quality online supplier can supply you high quality shrimp. The shrimpfarm.com for instance has nearly 4,000 positive reviews. I've added a link to the shrimpfarm.com in the description below if you want to check them out. Mistake number four is not doing your research before buying the shrimp. Not all shrimp are the same and not all shrimp will thrive in your local water. Typically, shrimp from the Neocaridina family are hardy and easy to care for. I always recommend people start with bog standard red cherry shrimp before moving on to something a little more exotic. Some shrimp from the Caridina family can be a little more finicky, but they might be perfect for your tap water. Do the research before buying the shrimp. Check out all the requirements of the breed of shrimp you are hoping to buy. Compare those requirements to the accommodation you can offer and make sure you can provide the perfect environment for your new shrimp to thrive. The next mistake on my list is starting with high-end shrimp. I will be the first to admit that some of the high-end shrimp are truly stunning. A group of black fishbone pinto shrimp look utterly amazing in a heavily planted nano aquarium. However, these shrimp will set you back around $20 each. That's an investment of nearly $250 in a group comprising a dozen shrimp. In my experience, it's a huge mistake for the first time shrimp keeper to start with high end shrimp. I firmly believe it's better to start with a breed of shrimp that is more forgiving of the mistakes we all make when we're new to the hobby. Red cherry shrimp, yellow shrimp, or maybe blue dream shrimp are all ideal for those less experienced among us. A nano tank filled with bright red cherry shrimp is equally attractive as one filled with a high-end shrimp. Now if you're finding value in this video, please take a moment to tap the like button. It helps support the channel and spread this video to other like-minded people. So now we're up to mistake number two on my list, and that is adding shrimp to a newly set up aquarium too quickly. Shrimp are grazers. They want to eat all day, every day. They literally spend their entire time eating, but they eat at a microscopic level. One essential part of a shrimp's diet is biofilm. Biofilm grows on pretty much every surface in an aquarium and it's essentially made up of different bacteria, algae and fungi. No matter how good your filters are and how clean you keep your tank, biofilm will form on almost every surface. Shrimp actually feed on the biofilm and, in my experience at least, biofilm is an essential component to a healthy shrimp tank. Biofilm develops naturally and at its own pace. You can't pop to your local fish store and buy some biofilm. You have to wait for it to grow. When we add shrimp to a brand new aquarium, it can essentially be a sterile environment with no biofilm. This can lead to shrimp starving, even though the shrimp keeper is adding food. My best advice is to allow the aquarium to mature for at least a couple of weeks 
but four to six weeks is better. Ideally, with some form of life like live aquarium plants. As a guide, once algae naturally starts to form in an aquarium, it is probably the right time to start adding some shrimp. Now the number one mistake I find new shrimp keepers make is not feeding your shrimp enough. Shrimp are often sold as cleanup crew or as scavengers to eat the leftover fish food in the aquarium. And whilst they will eat the leftover fish food, they also need to be target fed. To get the best out of your shrimp and to ensure they have a long healthy life, you need to be feeding the shrimp several times a week. I like to feed my own shrimp every other day or every third day depending on how many shrimp are in the tank. Countless times I've spoken with shrimp keepers who have lost their shrimp, only to discover they were not actually adding any shrimp food to the aquarium, but rather they're expecting the shrimp to fend for themselves. Now, as promised for those who stuck around to the end of the video, my one tip all new shrimp keepers should be aware of. My number one tip for all new shrimp keepers is provide ample hiding places for your shrimp. Many people do not realize the more hiding places you provide, the more likely your shrimp are to be out and about in the aquarium. Many people think if they give their shrimp places to hide, they will never see them. But in fact, the opposite is true. For shrimp to feel safe and secure and happy to venture out into the aquarium, they need to know there is a hiding place nearby. Let me assure you, the more hiding places you provide, the less likely your shrimp are to hide. If like me, you enjoy geeking out about shrimp keeping, I've added an entire playlist of videos on screen for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching.